Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Eliza Fi Creative. I know it's been a hot minute since I've posted a video. I designed this and I wanted to share my step-by-step -step tutorial, but before I get started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. All right, so we're gonna start by making the flower. So I'm gonna go to the left-hand side and click the polygon tool. I'm then going to left-click with my mouse on my screen and this box will pop up. I'm going to select six sides and hit OK. The polygon will appear, and then I'm going to make it bigger and center it on my artboard so we can see it. I'm then going to go up to Effect, Distort, and Transform, and then Pucker and Bloat. I'm then going to move the slider to the right until I get the flower petals, and hit OK. Once I hit OK, you'll notice that the polygon shape is still there. So we need to get rid of that. So we're going to go up to Object, Expand Appearance, and it will be gone. Using the Ellipse tool, I'm going to make a circle in the middle of the flower. I'm going to color it so we can see it, and then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and then put it in the place that I want it to sit. I'm then going to make a rectangle using the Rectangle tool to make the top of the bomb. And then once I've made the rectangle, I'm going to select A on my keyboard to activate the direct select tool. I'm then going to click with my mouse on the rectangle, and I'm going to move the mouse in towards the center of the rectangle to round the corners. And then just using my mouse, and I'm going to rotate the rectangle in the placement where I want it to sit. Using the pen tool, I'm going to draw a wavy line that is going to represent the fuse. I'm going to use the stroke panel and up the stroke just a little bit so we can see the line a little bit better. I'm going to make the explosion at the end of the fuse using the polygon tool. I'm going to give it eight sides this time and then using the effect panel just like before, I'm going to distort and transform and pucker and bloat and I'm going to move the slider to the left this time. So before I expand it, I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to go back up to expand and expand appearance. So now it's just the explosion shape. I'm going to do expand one more time. So it's a shape and not the stroke. And then I'm just bringing it down and I'm going to place it where I want it to be placed. So I'm going to clean up my flower a little bit. I'm going to up the stroke on the explosion so it matches the fuse line. I'm then going to unite the circle and the top of the bomb using the Pathfinder tool. And then I'm just going to clean up the flower a little bit because of these points. So I'm selecting the flower and the bomb layers. And I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool and then just run my mouse over those points to get rid of those points so it's all one, all its own shape. I then want to put an outline around the bomb and the flower, so selecting both layers, I'm going to duplicate them by hitting Command C and Command B to paste behind. So as you see in my layers panel, I have duplicated layers and I'm still selected on the bottom layers. And I'm going to unite them using the Pathfinder tool, and then I'm going to go up to Object, Path, and Offset Path. And then I'm just going to play with the settings to, to something that I like and hit OK. So I'm going to color my shapes now using the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to select the flower and turn it blue. Select the bomb, the outline, and the fuse and make it brown. I'm then going to color the inside of the explosion. So I'm gonna select the shape, go up to object, compound path, and release. Using the direct select tool again, I'm going to select that inner shape, use the eyedropper tool, and color it with the yellow. I'm now going to make a circle so I can fit the text into this place. So using the ellipse tool, I'm going to create the circle to the size that I want the text to fit into. Using the text tool, I'm going to type out the words and I'm typing you are the bomb. And then I'm going to bring my circle over to above my text just so I can work with it above here. I'm going to draw a little line with the pen tool. And then I'm going to select the line and the circle. 
I'm going to go to the Pathfinder tool and hit Divide. I'm then going to right click on my mouse and hit Ungroup. I'm then going to just move the shapes apart a little bit just so I have a little bit of a space between the text. I'm then going to change my font to Barricada, which I got off of Adobe Fonts. I will link it down below. I'm then going to make sure everything is capitalized and I'm going to bring my shape to the front of the layers. I'm then going to select the shape, the top shape and the UR, go up to object, envelope to store and then make with top object. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom object. So just to note that in the layers panel, your top shape or whatever shape you're using has to be above the text in the layers panel for this to work. I'm then going to select the shape and then go up to object, expand and hit OK. And now my text is its own shape. I'm then going to bring it over to the middle of my flower where the orange circle is. And I'm just going to get rid of that orange circle because I don't want that. And then I'm just going to move it around to the spot that I want it to be. Using my eyedropper tool, I'm going to color it the white. Now I'm going to make the background. We're going to go up to Windows and then Actions. We're going to use this panel a little bit later in the tutorial. So we're going to need the swatch panel because we're going to need to drag each color into the swatch panel, which we will need to use later. Looking at my layers panel, I have everything grouped. I want to duplicate that group, so I'm going to select it. Going to hit Command C and Command B to paste behind. So you, as you see, I have two of the same layer now. With the bottom layer selected, I'm going to go up to the Pathfinder tool and hit Unite. And I'm going to toggle off that top layer so you can see what happened. I have just united the whole shape so it's one shape. I'm going to toggle back on the top layer so you can see what's happening next. So I want to make sure that my bottom layer is selected. I'm going to go to the actions panel and create a new action. I'm going to hit that little plus symbol, name my new action, go up to object, path, and offset path. I'm going to change the settings and I'm going to hit OK. I want to then select the first color in my swatch panel and then I'm going to do the exact same steps as I just did two more times. And what's basically happening is I'm recording my steps so we can make this background really easily. So once I've selected every single color, I am done the steps. I am then going to hit stop on the actions panel. With that bottom layer, which is the dark orange selected, I'm going to hit play over and over again on the actions panel. And it's going to start building that background. So this looks kind of messy to me. So what I'm going to do is create a clipping mask, which sits within my artboard. So what I'm going to do is make a rectangle the exact same size as my artboard. I'm going to align the shape to my artboard using the align tool. I'm then going to select everything and I'm going to hit command seven on my keyboard and it's going to create a clipping mask. So now I want to put a texture on this just to give it a little bit more of a vintage look. So I just found a texture on Adobe Stocks. I have an account with them. So what I'm doing is just laying over the picture over top. This is like a JPEG, it's not a vector. While the image is selected, I'm gonna go up to the Opacities tool, and then I'm going to play with the blending mode. And I'm going to pick one that I think kind of blends in a little bit. I don't want it to like pop like this one. So I'm thinking I'm going to select either lighten or screen or even soft layer might be good. And then I'm going to tone down the opacity. Uh, I still don't like this, so I'm going to play with the soft light and then play with the opacity again. And I think that looks good. So then I want to take that image in the layers panel and then just move it into the clipping path I made earlier. And that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please message me on Instagram. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you make a design like this, I'd love to see it. So tag me in your post and I will see you in the next one.